Hey people, it is January 8th. It's Friday. I hope everyone is well. And we've got a interesting report here today in my opinion. Every day is interesting in today's world and in this economy. But first we're going to talk about the massive amounts, uh, the massive numbers of people in America that cannot pay their utility bills and it's enormous. It's between 35 and 40 billion dollars that people are behind on their utilities. Right, so this is much bigger than a wealth gap or a wealth divide where the rich get richer and the poor get um, further into poverty. Uh, this is people's basics are not being paid. The lights, uh, the, elect the, uh, the water. Uh, yes, in many places people have to pay a water bill. All right, uh, The heat. I mean, this is people's basic survival. And in some of these northern states, uh, it is absolutely breathtakingly cold and if you lose your heat uh, the warmest of blanket is not going to be enough and this is something that I think is very underreported but let's get into the numbers we're also going to talk about the the upcoming transition and how it could be uh, there's definitely in my opinion going to be more shock and awe scenarios play out like we saw uh, back in DC on the 6th uh, prepare because more shock and awe is ahead uh, but let's talk about the utility bills and the desperate, dire situation that so many Americans are in right now. Utilitydive.com. Utility customers owe up to $40 billion in debt. Who will pay it? So not only can they not pay their current month, they also have back amounts that are due in enormous numbers. Shut off moratoriums across the country have allowed impacted residents and small businesses to defer payments without the threat of losing service. And it basically says here that when the shutdowns end, the companies are going to have to make a decision and, and the, uh, the government is going to have to make a decision on if these people are going to have to pay their past due utilities. Right? So you've heard about debt forgiveness. This is also going to be applied to things like utilities. And think about this. The basic necessities people cannot afford. And we're going to get into the numbers here in just a minute. But residentials and small businesses could owe between 35 and forty billion dollars to their utilities by March. Right now it's between 35 and 40. It's estimated to be 40 billion by March. And think about this, for a large portion of these uh, people that are behind, um, most of them are between fifteen hundred and two thousand dollars behind on their utilities. And that's what many people pay in an entire year for their utility bills. Uh, starting in March 2020, Many states and utility companies suspended power shutoffs for non-payment. State mandated or voluntary utility shutoff moratoriums are now in place for 51% of the U.S. population. All right, so most of the country is under some sort of utility moratorium right now. All right, again, it's the dependent population. Without this assistance, maybe half the country would be in darkness and in cold or without air conditioning people in Arizona uh, for example that would be very very painful uh, for many many people now let's take a step back how did we get here well you have a system based on debt where people can go out and purchase things on debt it causes the price to rise its supply and demand the cost of living has been pushed up by the fiat lending banking system and it also allows people to live beyond their means. So if you're someone that likes to save and pay for things in cash, you're going to have an especially difficult time because prices of everything are being bid up by people that actually don't have the money. And we know that most of the population is living paycheck to paycheck even before the shutdowns, right? So don't let this narrative fool you that this is all about the shutdowns and that uh, getting a poke, uh, millions of people getting a poke is going to come in and save us. That's absolute absolute nonsense I think most of you are smarter than that by now All right, but let's take a look at a couple areas that are really hard hit with this utility situation this is out of khq.com one in three Spokane Spokane utility customers are more than two months late on bills one in three people in Spokane and I'm sure there's areas that are worse than that alright but this is just one of the recent articles that I found the city of Spokane is saying that small donations as small as a dollar or five dollars will help keep the lights on for people struggling 
And I question that. You really think that donations actually get to the people that need them, or do you think the people that collect the donations are maybe the ones that get to the, uh, the biggest cut, if you know what I mean? Okay, so here we are coming up on a year since the shutdown. And do things look better? Is this an amazing recovery that we, that we were told about for many, many months? All right, this is, uh, there's a broad, uh, sick uh, agenda, I think, behind all this. Right, I'm sure the powers that be, they didn't want uh, the entire country panicking. Uh, actually, part of the country is doing really good, right? But the divide is getting bigger. Uh, the poor are getting further into poverty. Uh, but the people at the top, and people in the top 50%, a lot of us are doing uh, good at this time. Now, this may not last because when half the, half the country is in poverty, right, things are going to expand and you're going to start seeing things on your doorstep, I think, sooner than most of us expect. All right, another recent article that points to the economic reality that's happening right now. Economy sees job losses in December for the first time in eight months as surging virus takes its toll. Non-farm payrolls fell by 140,000 in December against the consensus estimate for a $50,000 gain. Think about that. Instead of a 50,000 job gain, non-farm payrolls, Right, we saw a drop of 140,000. But yet they're telling us the unemployment rate is still 6.7%. Right, so think about this. If the unemployment rate was 6.7%, how come one in three customers in Spokane, Washington cannot pay the utility bills? Right, it doesn't add up. It doesn't make sense. All right, and some of you say are, are going to say this is doom and gloom. You're doing better than ever. Right, I hope you are doing better than ever. I had a very good 2020. A lot of us did here. Uh, we got into the right assets at the right time. Uh, I happen to be selling off some assets right now that are just skyrocketing in price. And I think there's going to be a huge pullback, so I'm getting rid of some of these assets. Uh, most of you probably know what I'm talking about. Uh, the reason I don't talk about it more is because most people are not in uh, this type of asset. And it causes a lot of um, uh, negativity because people feel like they missed out. But the bottom line is continue to prepare. Um, we are going to see things unfold here s continuing this month and beyond that are going to be mind-blowing, uh, shock and awe. Um, things are going to be beyond anyone's wildest imagination, I think, including mine. Right? And look how right we've been so far. We told you the recovery was a sham. Most people are still going to be struggling. We told you the wealth, wealth divide, the wealth gap was going to continue to get worse. All right, we told you certain markets, certain assets would be propped up and continue to rise. Uh, but listen to what I'm saying now. Big, big, drastic, eyeball-popping changes are going to be occurring here in the very, very near future. And you need to prepare. Grab yourself some precious metals, in my opinion. We saw a nice price pullback today. I say nice because I continue to buy the dips on these. Certain assets, when they're skyrocketing, it's time to sell. Other assets, when you see dips and pullbacks, it's time to buy. I'm currently still a purchaser of precious metals on these pullbacks. Silver, link down below. SD Bullion, fast shipping, great service. I say that because that's what I do. All right, I'm not giving advice, but I think you're going to be very, very surprised at what happens in the very near future uh, with our monetary system. Uh, and you're going to start seeing more things unfold here uh, any day. I mean, any day big events could unfold. But keep your eyeballs peeled. Stay safe. Stay well. Stay prepared. Bye for now, everybody.